And now it's time for RTB 101. This is the segment where we talk about practical questions to help equip you to share your faith with friends and family more effectively. And once again, I'm here with my colleague and fellow theologian, Kenneth Samples. Welcome, Hi. Ken. And, you know, as I'm talking with my non-Christian friends, one of the most common, most ubiquitous objections to the Christian faith, not just from non-Christians, even from Christians that maybe aren't so high on the church, is people have disappointed me. Yeah. People who name the name of Christ have deeply hurt me. Yes. And how do I start to think about that? Yeah, it's, uh, I agree with you. Um, quite frankly, I've struggled with it myself, uh, to be candid. There are people who have been disappointed with me even. Um, I like to say three things to it. The first point I want to make is that the one teaching that is so clear in Scripture and is confirmed in life is that human beings are sinners. Mm. They're broken, they're fallen, and Christians are forgiven sinners. But that process of transforming our culture, and we call it sanctification, where God changes our character, helps us to grow in holiness, that's a long one. It's a long process. And Christians make mistakes. Christians make serious errors in judgment. Sometimes Christians are, are hypocritical. Um, but that doesn't mean that Christianity is false. I think that's a great point. I think it was G.K. Chesterton who said that the doctrine of, of sin is the one doctrine that can be empirically verified. It's pretty easy to demonstrate that we're all sinners. That's right. But it's very important to understand that Christians are making the claim we're forgiven sinners, we're not perfect people. That's exactly right. We need to communicate that clearly. Now, another angle of this, a second point that I often make, is I think on a practical level, we need to go into our church experiences. We need to go into our Christian fellowship with a realistic understanding and expectation of the sanctification level of other Christians. I mean, people have to accept me where I'm at. In some ways, I've made more advances in other areas. Some areas I've made less. I think what can help us is to keep our eyes on Christ and realize that uh, Christians are not perfect people. They're forgiven, but they are people that still make mistakes and can act inconsistent with the, with the ethics and the worldview of Christianity. I think that it's Im so important to be able to differentiate between Jesus and what Jesus is saying and he's calling us to do, like what that ideal is versus how the, 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 the stage that many of us are in. That's right. That we are in a process of growing and That's we're right. in all different stages of growing. Some of us do a better job of emulating the Savior than others. Some of us do it good sometimes and not great other times. I mean, that's the message of Christianity. We are fallen. We, we need more than a prophet. It's not like Islam. We need someone to save us from our sins. That leads me to that third point that I like to emphasize, and that is, you know, if you get an inner look at me or inner look at people at your church, they may let you down. Uh, I've been let down. I think I've probably let people down at times. Jesus will not let you down. God, the Father, Son, and Spirit, they will fulfill their promises to you. And as you say, you need to distinguish between God's faulty followers and the Lord himself. The Lord will never fail us. He'll always fulfill his, his graciousness, his loving kindness to us. I think that many people who get really profoundly hurt by other Christians, especially Christian leaders, yes, have a tendency to, sometimes it can cause them to fall away from their faith or at least fall out of fellowship with their local church, with other believers. Oh yeah, easily. Easily. And I think that that is, it's important for us to understand and be circumspect about how Jesus thought about his church. That, that we are the bride of Christ. And so we don't want to be saying disparaging things about all Christians or the church. Yeah. You know, that that's his, the bride. But the real question is, is 
how are we, how am I going to show up better? How am right. I going to better emulate the Savior? And if I believe in salvation by grace, this great message that God's unmerited favor is what saves me, is nothing I can do to add to my salvation, then I have this inner obligation to, to try to relate to God's children in a gracious way. I, it's a struggle. There, there are times where there are people who are not easy to love. Uh, and yet, if we believe in grace, we have to be open to that grace transforming us. Yeah, loving the bride of Christ, even when it's kind of messy. Amen. And hard. That's right. I want to encourage all of you to check out Ken's blog, Reflections by Ken. So many thought-provoking articles there. And this was based on one of those blog posts. So if you want to hear more from Ken, check out his blog.